The Roto Grinders Daily Fantasy Podcast feed is presented by Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Check out their Week 17 NFL Baller Contest, where $150,000 will be up for grabs. Use promo code GRINDERS30 if you haven't yet signed up for 30 bonus dollars. That's only on Yahoo Sports Daily Fantasy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gilcast. My name is Davis Maddock. I'm joined by my friends Nate Nolling, Sammy Reed. We are uh, coming to you from the Sports Grid Fantasy Football Podcast simulcast on the Roto Grinders Podcast Network. And uh, we, we, I promise you, don't stop. If you're looking at your podcast right now and you're about to turn it off, don't. Okay, we all won, but. Sammy's lineup was objectively stupid, <laughs> so he, he won, but it, he objectively made uh, the improper decision. So he scored, I, he scored 200 points in cash, but you know he was a fish. It right. was a win-win. So, it was a win-win. Sammy it was, was a win-win. Win because we're about and to. and Nate finished with the lowest point total of all of us, but he will at some point refuse to hold an L of some degree because Cooper Cup scored a touchdown on Saturday, so he's just gonna he's gonna be able to hold. Uh, that one in there. Actually, do you guys, did you guys play on Saturday? Do you want to talk about the Saturday slate at all? Um, no, because all it did was tilt me in my seasonal leagues because I had a ton of Will Fuller. Will Fuller's tough. Uh, I, I will say this. You know how every time you go to play a GPP slate and you're like, dude, the chalk can't hit every time, bro. Like, like just fade the chalk, but then you just end up playing nothing but the chalk anyways. And then the chalk doesn't hit. It's never been so painfully clear that the right thing to do on Saturday was just not play Jameis or Deshaun at all and just do the Rams and the 49ers games as stacks. And I just sat there on my phone all day with my dead Jameis and Deshaun teams. And I'm just like, I am an idiot. Like, I'm the reason that GPP is continue to be profitable for people who just refuse to, like, stack the chalk. But I was just like... 60% on DeAndre Hopkins, I'll get 80%. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. And it's just like, dude, grow up. So that's, I just needed to make that observation. Davis, I, the, sh- the sharp move was playing Jameis, uh, like five, six weeks ago when people all still thought he was bad. Not when like everybody's on him, all of his receivers are dust and he's like 9k. Hey, here's, I question, here's the I thing. That's the time to get off of him. Was it, was it sharp to play 100, 100% Cam Brate or no? Uh, I mean, between Cam Braid and OJ Howard, I had like 120%. I think I might have had men one of those guys in every lineup I did. Davis put his, his, his stuff in the DR Otto. He's like, definitely, uh, Braid and or OJ Howard. Davis, how much money do you think you'd make? Uh, how many like real American dollars would you have if you didn't do your stupid rules on the Otto? If you just like. (laughs) Oh, no, the rules, the rules are clearly good. By hand? No, I know the rules, like the functionality is, and for normal humans, they are. I'm saying, like, when you go galaxy brand on yourself with the rules. Well, here's the thing. The whole, the whole idea, it to me. the whole idea behind the double stack with the bring back is that you are inducing a, just a ton of volatility, right? Because those lineups make up a very small portion of the field overall. So you're, you're killing your projection. Like, so just like if you think about it, like, What's better, uh, Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller and Justin Watson or just Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, and two other the best plays? That other team is going to project way better, but there's no correlation. You, like, So you're going to have a bunch of bad lineups just because fast, they correlate. Fast you don't understand the soccer. thesis of the play. Yeah, fast forward you don't understand the thesis the of the play. Cast, asking Davis if he's ever won an NFL GPC. <laughs> You cool. guys want to hear? Cool. You guys want to? You guys want to hear a sick beat? Oh yeah! I was winning the um, Bears Chiefs showdown mini max until the lo- second to last play of the game, and Javon Wims caught a screen pass and beat me. One, I was I had a a solo winner, so I was unduplicated, and J- Javon Wims, Javon Wims over Blake Bell. Oh no! Tough scene. You're, in a, surpri- you're, in, a, you're in a surprisingly good mood today, Davis. I didn't even realize I was winning until like literally like the last drive and I opened it up and I was like, Oh, that's cool. And then I didn't uh, just immediate. Well, here's the thing. Dink needed the Javon Wims catch to win 50 K. And if Dink is about to run good, like he's going to run good. 
So <laughs> there was there was just there was no fighting that. It's the speed bump underneath the dink juggernaut. Right. Exactly. Kind of uh, just okay. Accept it. So our uh, our Sunday lineups. Um, I, I, I did not tweet this cause I didn't want to spend an hour arguing with the soup mafia on Twitter, but, but when, when Derrick Henry was ruled out, I was just like, oh, everyone's going to have the same team. So like, I was going to tweet like, oh, I'm excited to collude with 1000 to 5000 of my closest friends because everyone, well, everyone who's good at DFS played like, <laughs> like one of five possible teams. Like there, was, there was, was a, any, was any of them mine? No. <clears throat> well, <laughs> here's <laughs> here's here's the thing. Um, what you did, Sammy, was you 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 saw a tight end who was projected for the third most points of the slate, cost forty four hundred dollars, and was seventy percent owned. And you said, actually, I'm just gonna I'm gonna not. I'm just gonna play something else instead of that play. I'm just gonna play a different play instead. Yeah. And it worked out for you. And I never want my friends to lose money. So I'm not even mad that it worked out for you, but you just, you just, you, you gal brained it and I, it's good for you. Thanks, man. I mean, it's, it's really more of an art. You know, I, I, I understand you're looking at your projections and your ownership, but I don't give a damn about all that noise. I could give two squirts. It's, it's a cheap tight end. Let's roll. And I smashed. What put Here's the thing, Austin Hooper, first? Austin Hooper, not a cheap tight end. He just happened to be priced like one. Yeah, Austin Hooper is the, the number one tight end in fantasy points per game this year. Hooper was literally like $1,500 <laughs> underpriced here. <laughs> like, he should have been 6K, and people still would have played him. You know, Nate, you're being kind of mentally weak here. You have to understand, <laughs> like, you have to take the whole lineup as as an entire whole. You can't just isolate one play and say, oh, yeah, you got to do this. The reality is it's a tight end. Yeah, it's a tight end. Well, that's stupid. Just to say it's just a tight end. Like, that is literally the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Because the whole reason we say that is because it's a tight end would mean, like, oh, other people are also going to be playing Jonu Smith or Caden Smith or Dallas Goddard or whoever. But everyone everyone you played against today, I guarantee you, you go open all your head-to-heads, everyone you played against today had Hooper. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Hooper was was how owned? I mean, he was uh, only, he was he was percent owned, but I bet of the winning lineups, he was like eighty to ninety percent owned. It was like Hooper got you on the right construction. You can't have the right construction without Hooper. Man, my my construction was hot though. You, so your construction, you your team was just two v two versus or yeah, you like was, no, you paid up for a defense. No, I paid twenty six hundred. Well, I paid twenty two hundred. Yeah, our team was that. our team was three v three, but I did not consider your team for a country moment. <laughs> well, that's, 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 that, that's why you scored twenty points less than I did because you, you just didn't you just didn't think outside yes. the box, Davis. Okay, so oh. let's let's just go let's Sammy, go rewind go back to where you can't open your computer and get down to Zoom. <laughs> Look, so why, let's why, let's why are you bringing up old stuff? <laughs> let, let's let's rewind to it. Well, no, first of all. Let's go back to last week when you did this and you got mega punished by by <laughs> Tyler Higby outscoring Ian Thomas by twenty five points. Yeah, dude, dude, I won last week. I won. Last yes, week. you you won, but the decision got you punished. The decision this week did not get you punished. You ran good on the the one v one. That's right. That's right. <sighs> okay, let's try and be helpful. No. So all of us, all of us played eight thousand dollar Lamar Jackson. None of us played Russell Wilson. None of us played Philip Rivers. Um, I don't know who else. Those were the only two guys I guess I really well, no, also I saw a Matt Ryan team that had that if I would have played it would have been just the pure stones and I kinda wish that I would have. But before the Dion news, I was on I I I would have played Greer before the Dion news. Well, that is I hope that you feel sufficiently stupid because that, that would have been great. That would that, that, that would have been, been good for this. It would have been good for the show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean before the Dion news, I mean, because I wanted Michael Thomas, Julio, uh, I, I couldn't get, you know, I couldn't playing get. Julio before the Dion stuff, I think would have been, would have required some finesse. You would have had to have eaten one bad play somewhere. And that play would have been Will Greer for me. <laughs> that would have been inexcusable. That would have been, that would have been, was that would have been three quarterback. I, I like, I'm yeah, glad that the Dion lose. This is how much did he score? 
Like it had, it had to have been like no points. Yeah, it was like seven points. Two twenty four and three picks for Greer. And and you know what? Two twenty four. Two twenty four flatters his effort, dude. Yeah, he 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 had a little less than ten points. I think. I think I think the last like hundred yards of that came in the in the last like three drives. So. Yeah, glad glad that glad that we got the Dion news. But uh he was still only like six what was he what was Dion? He was forty three percent. He was not I'm looking in the massive twenty five dollar double at forty three. Yeah, I'm which, looking I'm which, looking at the same contest. It, which I know it didn't work out, but like that Dion thing was a if you didn't play Dion It was a it was literally a stone cold layup. Like you're yeah. you're you're a big dumb idiot fish if you did not play Dion. But it, okay, so tell me if I'm a fish here. I played him in cash, and I literally didn't play him in any tournament lineups. Nah, maybe I did. Maybe like one or two, but not very many. I I in tournament. So in my single entry tournaments that I build by hand, I did Washington instead. But I consciously made an effort to do two higher price running backs because I thought that would be a very unique construction. Uh, in my MME run, which I fire in all the low dollar stuff, I I actually just did. Minimum one, Deion Lewis, DeAndre Washington. So every lineup had one of the two. Yeah, good rules. Yeah, I did. I did not expect Deion to only get two targets here. Well, yeah, I thought I he'd did. have more, but he still had 17 interactions, right? 15 yeah, rushes, 15 two rush targets, attempts. like for whatever he was, 4K, like that is it. He he layered he layered at it. Uh, no, because he played the whole game. And he didn't. <laughs> he just didn't. He just didn't do anything. Yeah, he didn't come on your podcast and then douche everybody. Well, here's the thing. Actually, I I will say this. Dion had 19 like 19 receiving yards on his first catch, and he ran pretty well. It's just like they in the the Titans do this thing where they uh they just go three and out a bunch until they get like a 70 yard touchdown, <laughs> and then and then that's just how they get their points. And also, I think uh, I think Tannehill refuses to check down. Because he doesn't want to hurt his yards per attempt, he wants to keep that that YPA really pristine so that he can angle for that sick contract. So he he just refuses to check down. He wants hey, to win bro. the the YPA crown. He he had another ten YPA today. Well, yeah, you love yards it. on twenty seven attempts. Yeah, uh, he just uh, he just is going to like lead the NFL in sack yardage loss per game. <laughs> love that, love that for him. Um. So yeah, we we all played Lamar. I I didn't. I looked at other teams because I was really trying to get onto Devonta Freeman and Julio Jones both together, and I just did not. I didn't see a team where it oh, worked because that, that, that was that was my team, Davis. Right. Didn't yeah. see a team like it worked. That's what did, yeah. Saying. Didn't didn't <laughs> see a team that worked though within the rules of logic and math. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are such squids, bro. You're like, bro, I couldn't do it because I had to have this one tight end, like. <laughs> Well, it's just like uh, you you got to build like systematically, and you got to decide the plays that are locks, and then the plays that are more in the gray area. And Hooper was just a lock. No, I I, I considered him like a very good play. I thought he was a very good play, but uh, I'm not I'm not gonna hang my whole lineup well, on the tight end. And and that's why it's more of an art. That's right. That's right. Well, and here's just, the thing. Why why would you why would you do that for tight end, but not for quarterback? It makes it would have made way more way sense, more sense oh, to play Russell Wilson instead of a Gasicki. You, you know, uh, it's because Lamar Jackson is like the best fantasy player that there is. And I kind of consider him different than all the other quarterbacks. Like, if it was between Russell Wilson and Phil Rivers, I just would have gone down to Rivers. Uh, cause I don't give a damn, but like Lamar Jackson is, dude, this would have been, Sammy, different. this would have been a prime jam in CMC spot for you, actually. I know. And CMC smashed. We actually got a, a Twitter question uh, that CMC was only 14% owned. How on earth did that happen? Yeah, I saw that, but the the answer is very easy. It's because no one knew what to – like, the offense was horrible with Greer. He yeah, he literally – he, he had to catch 15 checkdowns to be, like, a reasonable value. And there was so much value at these – like – with with Dewash, with Lewis, with Gordon, with Devonta, with Mixon, there were so many guys in this mid tier that were going to get like guaranteed workload. Obviously, the Mixon, when we got the the report about his potential limit, it, and not as much, but but everybody, I mean, there were so many running backs in the mid tier. Yeah, I think Nate's answer is correct. When you have like a bunch of four K running backs that project for you know eighteen touches. Yeah, you know, paying like six thousand dollars more for a guy who projects for like twenty five yeah. just 
Yeah, it just it, that's just not it. And, and yeah. wide receiver yeah. was wide receiver was horrible as evidenced by one of the plays that Nate made. Where like and, and Nate was not the only one that made it. A lot of people played this lineup that Nate had. Uh, in fact, I will uh, let me see. If, I bet I can. That lineup is three points behind mine. So just gotta scroll here a little bit. Oh, scroll down a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Nate, Nate, you were Nate, you were duped so hard. Which I'm surprised by. I thought everybody was going to be on Ward over Fitz. So, so Keenan Allen was 37% owned. And yeah, you were, I, Nate, so I think of the 9% of people who played Larry Fitzgerald, like I, honest to God, I think like 5% of them. So like a, a very big chunk of the player pool had just had this exact lineup yeah. that you played. I, here's the thing. I, I, I don't feel bad about the Fitz over Ward. That was intent. I, I, I was on that kind of all week. Uh, and I felt good about it. Even you, well, you, the you, well, hold on. We're getting ahead of ourselves because we gotta, we gotta talk about running backs first. Okay. I mean, running backs was, it was for me, Devonta. There were two the locks. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it was Devonta, De- or Devonta, DeAndre. And then obviously when the DeAndre okay. news came out, he was the next guy that I was playing. So. so before Sammy gets a chance to talk, I completely agree with what he did in like uh, a vacuum, which is he decided that I'm not playing Dusty MG3. Like I'm not playing Melvin Gordon. I'm going to get Devonta Freeman in. Um, where I disagree with him is that the difference between the two players was enough to justify getting off of the other good part, like another very important part of the lineup. And um, I just need to, anyone who played against me, and you felt the wrath of Melvin Gordon's .8 yards per carry in this game. I honestly, I, I like, I apologize to you, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon getting 22 with how he played today has, it's got to be one of the worst correlations to like good fantasy game and like worst real life performance I've ever seen. He was so bad in this game and he caught six check downs. So like he out targeted Eckler and he got two one yard touchdowns, one on a pass interference, one on Keenan Allen getting Keenan Allen uh, just fell over at the oh, one yeah. yard line. Like he had he, all he had to do is so turn tilting. and walk into the end zone and he just slips and falls over like an idiot. Yeah. That swing for me because I had uh Keenan obviously and then everybody else who didn't have Keenan had uh Melvin Gordon was tilting. It was still. Did, you had you had Melvin Gordon. Oh no, you had. No, Freeman. I went Devonta because I'm not a. Okay. That, that's right. So so He's both of you guys both of you guys were right we, in that yeah. Freeman was the better play. I will say this though, the the thesis of the play was that Devonta Freeman has this crazy workload, and he actually didn't in this game. Brian Hill ended up seeing I think three fewer carries than him, and he was replaced on the goal line. Uh, Freeman just started off the game hot fire with the two touchdowns. I mean, he was a better play, but the thesis just, of the play – two touchdowns, yeah. Yeah. The thesis of the play needed to be slightly revised. That's all I'm I saying. I mean, neither neither of us could have expected that Devonta Freeman was going to have 11 targets and nine catches. Like, Correct. that was not part yeah. of what I thought he was going to do. And De- so Devonta McCaffrey, like, they call him. I know. I, dude, he was just at home and had this giant implied – He was clearly the better play. And Jacksonville yeah. is just straight giving up. Like they are yeah. over it. They can't. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't find, try and find a way to get Fat Matt in again this week. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, that was that was a one time stand, bro. That was a one night stand. And uh, you, do you uh, do you want to do you uh, well while we're here? Do you want to apologize to Al- to Alvin Kamara? Do you have anything you'd like to say, say to him? I mean, I no, <laughs> no, I got <laughs> me. Two touchdowns. Screw Sammy, it. Sammy, I'm proud of you. Don't take that out. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it, yeah, dude, refuse. You refuse to hold it. You you hold on to Leonard Fournette over Alvin Kamara as long as you possibly can. I will. <laughs> dude, it, don't 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 like act like Fournette is not one of the highest volume running backs we've seen all season. I mean, is he even anymore? I feel like they yeah, run so. Does. I feel like they run so few plays that he's not. Maybe he is. I don't know. I I excluded him from my tournament run, so I didn't I didn't play him at all. Nate, back me up here. I, yeah, one of those, I mean, he still is. Davis. Yeah. He's like the third highest expected points on the season. Out, uh, it's like CMC, Michael Thomas, then Fournette. So yeah, I didn't, dude. I didn't even hate Kamara. I just liked Fournette better. Like I believed in his volume more. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Fournette gets a ton of work, but at the end of the day, Kamara. That was a bad fade that week. Yeah, whatever. Dude, he, he sunk me in a in a seasonal championship game. So he got the last laugh over me. And I didn't have to take the L. Alvin Kamara gave me the L. So yeah. hats off so to Sammy, him. So, Sammy, 
We played then the same running backs. Us yeah, three. we we both played Freeman, Lewis, and DeAndre. Yeah, Davis. I actually do think the Gordon. I mean, I get it from a construction standpoint, but the Gordon over Freeman thing. It was bad. It was bad. Cardi Cardi told me it was bad before Locke. Leone told me it was bad before Locke, and I I basically was just like, uh, <laughs> it's more Leroy than RG, Jenkins. Guys. You know, got to get in MG three and his here's here's the thing. Yards. Melvin Gordon objectively. Not a good play. Probably, probably my guess is his like expected PPR points from this game was like 12 and he got. No, it was higher. I mean, he was like, I think he had like five less expected points than Devonta, but it was just like, I don't know, game flow. I mean, that's about right. He, he had a horrible game. I, I will say this though. Every other thing in my lineup was the right play though. And, do you and want to know, do you want to know what sketched me out a little bit about him? Is that last week he fumbled? He sucks. Twice. Yeah, that's that's another part of it. Last week he fumbled twice and he was basically benched. He came in. So if I can assuage your concerns, go, go Justin Jack Justin out. Jackson was injured in practice this week, and uh, it was a good chance he was going to be inactive, and he was actually inactive. And he was, yeah, he didn't play. That's so uh, the other the other guy I was considering here was Philip Lindsay, who actually had a, a big smash game. It was Philip Lindsay Eagles defense over what I did play, but I literally opened up like this is Nate. Do you are you ready? Call, like get the mentally weak button ready. I opened up Philip Lindsay's game logs. He has not had oh over gosh. 13 DraftKings points since like week five, and I was just like, I'm not playing this dude. And, and like, Nate has played him like 30 percent of the week. <laughs> I was just like, I was just like, no, like I know he had a great game. I know it was a nut spot. He projected pretty well, but I was just like, I'm not, like, I'm not doing this. I'm playing Melvin Gordon because you know what? Melvin Gordon gets one yard touchdowns. He, he's and that's good at that. You know what Phil Lindsay did? He got like 19 rushing attempts and like three he touchdowns. smashed. Yeah, he was a great play. Uh, there, I I played him like a good bit in MME and Roy, Royce Freeman had that one yard touchdown. Pretty cool. tilting. Also, okay, uh, d- sharper, sharper square. Uh, I played, I played Drew Locke in single entry GPP today. He was like, and he was like, literally like 2%. Like was nobody. Was it because you were him. stacking him with Sutton? Like what was your reasoning? Sutton, Sutton, Galladay bring back. Well then it's I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go square just because they projected to win this game and they're not trying to throw the ball a lot with him. I just don't Dude. see a lot of ball. The, Drew, Drew Locke, gets the bonus or, he, he's about to be four and one as an NFL starter after they go beat the Raiders next week. That's an awesome stat. Uh, I'm glad we're quoting quarterback wins here. I I just I talk, actually kind I kind of think Drew Locke might be good. Can we talk? Forget Drew Locke. Can we talk about Joe Mixon? Um, because he was just mega, mega, mega chalk. People still just, played him. I didn't. I didn't play him at all. So I, I when you don't have a guy, it's hard to find his ownership. I don't know what his own, Nate, do you have any idea? No, I, didn't, I don't think he was that played after the news. But, I, I mean, so, I, and, and obviously he ended up not doing very well. Were we fish for letting this flu stuff, like, get into our heads and not playing it? I didn't, I wasn't considering him to begin with. Oh, he was like oh, a jam oh, for me. He was, he was in the um, massive $25 double up, he was 22.8% owned. Okay, and obviously uh, that was before the Dion Lewis news. So Dion Lewis kind of changed things from that standpoint. But I was I was huge on Mixon coming. I had I actually had Kamara as my third running back before the Dion thing. Before the Dion thing, I think I had uh, D Wash, uh, Freeman, and Mixon as my top three. Yeah, and Mixon did end up toting it 21 times, and he ended up getting uh, what two targets? So two targets, 21 rushes, like. Solid workload yet again. Um, yeah, very, against Miami. very fat netty, if you yeah, will. Very fat netty line. Yeah, but I, I just didn't know if that was the right thing um, to to get off him because of flu concerns. And then you know, Twitter was like showing all the videos of him warming up and looking lethargic running onto the field, and people were like running away. Hey, dude, we so, got we got Dion we got Dion versus Mixon right in our co-owned team. Dion think- scored him. I think if yeah. you're going to play a guy because of his workload and then right before game there is something that comes out, not like you're worried about efficiency because of weather or anything like that, but you're actually questioning now his volume projection, and that's yeah. the one reason you were going to play him, I think it's totally okay to get off of that. 
work. I think it's much more fit. I think, I think the, anything that gets you off of chalk Joe Mixon is good. Just like if I'm thinking about, <laughs> thinking about like players that are set up to do very bad in like high owned spots, it's like, it's like any Bengals player who's expected to do anything. It's Leonard Fournette and Joe Mixon. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I literally think Leonard Fournette's had like one good game all year long, <laughs> like literally one. Yeah, yeah, but that uh, that 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 rushing whopper. <laughs> that dude is, his, his his unrealized ground yards are off the chart. <laughs> dude, his Slansky bucks are just like overflowing his bank account. <laughs> I didn't realize how many people played Joe Mixon though. DFS is not dead, guys. You want to know was, what's I amazing? Mean, Joe Mixon wasn't play. a bad play, Davis. I I, I, I just clicked. Oh, he was a horrible play after the stomach flu thing. Like legit bad. Like legit okay, very bad. Saying, yeah, but to actually like gave a measured play. take, and Davis is just like, nah, you have the stomach flu. You can't play him, bro. No, dude. Here's the thing. If you like Nate, actually Nate said the right take, which was the only reason to play Mixon is because you are expecting him to get all of the work, basically, which is what has been true. And if you think that there is. And also, if we want to peel the onion back another layer further, the Bengals, like, actively don't even want to win this game, really. They want to get Joe Burrow. So, like, why are they playing a running back with a stomach flu to begin with? You know what I'm saying? It, they almost did screw up and win it. They scored 23 in the fourth quarter to tie it. Yeah. Um. So right. this is this is actually so funny that the first team I clicked on to find a Joe Mixon ownership percentage, you know who they had at tight end? Gusecki. <laughs> Gusecki. <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that was my placeholder that I left in there. Uh, uh, um, oh, the so, them together, Sammy. <laughs> you love, you I love assume this to person was over the cash line with that awesome lineup. Yeah, he also played Andy Dalton in cash. I think maybe he thought this was a tournament. <laughs> Ooh, that's Dalton-Nixon correlation. Love it. He got, he got, he got Tyler Boyd in there also. Wow. Well, Bengals yeah, that, no wonder he's bringing it back with Gasecki. That's I mean, literally, what did Dalton put up? Like 40 points? Boy, yeah, Dalton was, I think he was the QB1. 37.84 yeah. on DraftKings. Oh gosh. And what did Boyd put up? 30 something? 36.8. Boyd was like the and, wide receiver one. And he was chalky. Like 15%. Huh. This is, That's I think what? this is the first time we've eaten a wide receiver chalk, like semi chalk, like huge bomb and, and lived to tell the tale. We, what we was lost. Boyd owned? We lost the Fuller week and the Kirk week. Dude, those he was were like, rough weeks. He was like 15%. Huh. Wow. So the key is, the key is next year, guys, is we just have to remember when these ex- volatile wide receivers are going to be like the mega chalk, we got to play them. Wait, why was Boyd so old? Miami dude, shootout. But I, he was like my third. I think Kitchen tweeted out that um their shadow corner wasn't going to be shadowing, so mm-hmm. I think everyone was like, "Oh, dude, no shadow coverage." The matchup. Yeah. The matchup. The matchup. Love, the love match- to see, love to see soccer Dave uh, moving the ownership with his CD so, wide So I didn't, takes. I didn't feel, I didn't feel like arguing on Saturday on Twitter because I was out in Kansas City with some of my friends. But when when um John Brown scored that touchdown, what's the the Patriots corner's name that everyone loves? Ever, he leads the league in interceptions. Uh, Nate. Gilmore? No. Gilmore. Yeah, yeah Gilmore. Gilmore. Oh, so wait, John, John Brown burns that guy, scores a touchdown, and I, 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 if I wanted to feel like arguing, I would have tweeted, tough, tough touchdown for the wide receiver cornerback matchup truthers. But I, I didn't, I didn't feel like arguing. I thought maybe that was, it's that just, was really disciplined of you, Davis. Week 16, I, I just thought yeah. you'd be on Twitter throwing haymakers. I'm gonna drop it on the Swolecast next week to to Kitchen, so he'll be ready I for like it. it. Um, Strong. all right, so so yeah, I'm bad. I'm bad for playing Melvin Gordon. Whatever. Uh, it's all right. We're about to get the receiver where I did something egregious. Yeah, don't don't yeah. worry, Davis. It's much better to run good at running back than it is at tight end. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay to make. Uh, so at back. so at wide receiver, I did the correct thing, which is that I played Julio Jones, and Michael Thomas, and Greg Ward. Um, and it, it feels like that's what I did. So it feels like maybe. By week 16, people should realize that Michael Thomas is, is, like, I, you know what, I, I'll never compliment Nate, I never compliment Nate on this show, but Nate is actually, one thing that Nate has done is that he's, he's been like, you know, Cooper Cup and Michael Thomas, these guys who are just so elite 
in terms of Whopper and getting, <laughs> you know, just the, the 15 plus targets a week. These guys are locks on DraftKings. Yeah. And, and because we didn't have Cup on this slate, it was just an easy. Yeah. Game. Cup wasn't on the slate. So it was just like, we can just get Michael Thomas in and, Michael Thomas is like, because he fills a wide receiver slot and because you're, you just are like running back every week. I don't even remember the last week we didn't have to choose like some 5k running back, you know, Miles Sanders, Philip Lindsay, DeAndre, like whoever. We've always had that. But at wide receiver, those 5k guys have been like the poison chalice all year. Like those guys, like universally, other than the one week where Christian Kirk got like a 60 ball, they've, they've been horrible every week. So down besides that game. What's yeah. that? Does he have a touchdown besides that game, Kirk? No. Uh-uh. In his in his career, does he have a touchdown besides that game? I be- he had four touchdowns last year, if I recall correctly. I swear. I'm I'm looking this up on on football reference. But yeah, yeah, he had, he had he had he had three touchdown. Yeah, he had three touchdowns last year. He had, but only only the three touchdown game this year. He's not had. Uh, he's had two 100 yard games. And yeah, it's, he's not having a great year. Yeah. But at the end of the day, Michael Thomas was the correct move. We all had him where I fished it. Was, you fished it twice, but you're not no, even no, going to no, no, say no. that I'm you did. Gonna, the second one was not a fish. The second it one, was. I, 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 I actually. Dude, you gotta clearly. stop jamming the horizontal rate in cash. Yeah. What's up with that? Wait, what? You, okay, Davis, you literally played a guy named Greg Ward who had less than half the target share. Dude, if you watched Greg game. Ward in college, you would know. Okay, well, Larry Fitzgerald's gonna be in the Hall of Fame, and, uh, You're, let me know. Oh, let me tell you how I feel about the Hall of Fame <laughs> after the experience I've had with boomers on Twitter this week, buddy. <laughs> Davis, Davis, you, 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 you had an opportunity to play a Hall of Fame wide receiver at 4.2k that was gonna have a 20. So instead, I played a Hall of Fame quarterback at 4.2k? No, I'm saying the he's Greg in he's Ward in the versus. he's in the he's in the University of Houston College Football Hall of Fame. Okay, I'm saying Greg Ward versus Larry Fitz was a bad was a I, I think Fitz was the play easiest he, easiest play I've made all year. Didn't think about didn't waver for a moment. So Nate, I'm I'm actually gonna go with you the, here. The, yeah, I, the uh, bad play was King. I played Ward. I played Thomas, Julio, and Ward, and uh, I didn't really consider Fitz, and I probably should have more. I mean, his target share projection is just – like, I understand that Ward, if you look at the – like, the sample over the past couple of weeks, like, hey, Ward's going to get this, Ward's going to get this. But, like, what Fitz has done, he, he, he has that target share, like, every game of all When do you think the last time Fitzgerald saw one game with as many targets as Greg Ward had in each of his last two games? Again, it's not a question. No, 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 just answer the question. In targets? Week two. When do you think the last time he saw nine or more targets was? Probably like first couple weeks of the season. Week two. Okay. Told you. I looked this up already. Yeah. Dude, Greg Greg Ward Greg Ward was a better play. And I don't even I don't even care your facts and logic, dude. It's just come on. Greg Ward. Do you understand like how target shares work, or do you just want to look at like when Philly throws an a massive amount of inflated targets on a game? Like do you understand like he only got nine targets, or he did get nine targets, but when you look at his actual target share in those games, it wasn't way higher than what Fitz What I'd like you, what I'd like to direct you to is that Larry Fitzgerald is an ancient old man, and I'd spent all week dunking on olds, and I was not gonna play an old. There was just no way. <laughs> after like, after like, arguing with people on Twitter all week about Don Hudson and Tom Fears, I was going, and also, Philly has like no bodies. They they they're they're running out JJ Arcega Whiteside and freaking Josh Perkins at and, wide receiver. And they, okay. you really have so, to understand that Greg Ward may not be that great in the context of today, but like in 1963, he would have been the best. Yeah, dude, in 1963, in him and Chris, him and Chris Conley would have like. By the way, I need you guys to know I, that tweet got a million and a half impressions. It's like the most beautiful thing I've ever done in my life. Well, just to set the record straight, real quick. So Davis. In the five games that how many, Greg, how many lights did he get? Like twelve K. In the five games that Greg Ward has played, he has had one game with the target share above twenty percent. Uh well Larry, that's because it first of all, I oh also I, I know why you don't like had, Greg Ward. Larry Fitzgerald for the last four weeks has had Sammy. What? Do you know why he doesn't Jordan like Matthews. Greg Ward? It has nothing to do with <laughs> It's because no. he out targeted Jordan Matthews that one week. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Matthew's got cut more than the team. And Nate 
looks at him with hate every time. <laughs> it just it remind it reminds Nate of that dark time in his life where he rostered Jordan Matthews and Cash, and so he just has to he's taking his anger out on Greg Ward. He's done nothing wrong. <sighs> Let's get to my actual fish move. I played Keenan Allen instead of figuring out a way to get up to Julio. So your 3v3 versus me was Devonta Freeman, Keenan Allen, and the the Denver Broncos defense yeah. versus Melvin Gordon, Julio Jones, and the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. Yeah, I just prioritized running back in that spot way more. I just thought I would die before going into cash games with Melvin Gordon, I think. Like, I think I – like. This is coming from a man who jammed in Jordan Matthews. I mean, this yeah, this is coming from this is coming words. from noted noted Philip Lindsay over Miles Sanders person who's prioritizing running back. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just need Nate to hold one L this year. Just, I just one. Did. I just said Keenan was not the right move. You did. I um, should have figured out a way to get to Julio. Dude, do you remember how hard you guys dunked on me in like week four when I didn't play Keenan Allen? Yeah, that was. Yeah. That turns was out, crazy. turns out he is not a member of the NFL 100. No. Do we he's, think Keenan is bad, or do we think that Rivers is just dust? Both. Yeah, Rivers is a hundred percent dust. I, you're you're talking. Be, you're talking yeah. about uh, for future, about future St. Louis. I was gonna say future future St. Louis BattleHawks. Quarterback no, of the XFL. I, I, I think I think he's going to end up somehow in the Bears. I think. So since that game, since the 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 game, uh, 17 targets, 183 yards, and two touchdowns. Keenan has not topped 100 yards. Uh, he scored two touchdowns total. He's had games of four for 18, two for 33, four for 61, three for 40. I mean, he and he is Henry out for like half of those. Yeah, uh, Henry like, was out. Henry was out. Mike four Williams. to ten, I think. Yeah, Henry was out. Williams wasn't catching touchdowns. It was literally like, like Keenan's just. Keenan is cuck central. I mean, he's. Got, I mean, he's. He he's literally against the Raiders. He's that's, fancy. That's he's fancy Danny Amendola, is what he is. Fancy Greg Ward. Dude, Greg Ward. Greg Ward like burnt. Dallas so hard on a third down. I thought the game was just going to end right there. Like their season, their season ended because they couldn't cover Greg Ward on a third and eight. He he he's gotta, shook uh, you know, he's Jordan. Gotta cut back. He's got to cut back on that. So Davis, how does it oh, feel yeah. to know that you literally took like at the same price tag a guy with half the target share of Larry Fitz? I mean, dude, watching Greg Ward on that third down with that catch and run, it felt pretty good. Yeah, because like he ran up the field, whereas Larry Fitzgerald would have just like ran just straight sat. to the sideline. He would have just See, sat. The frustrating thing was Fitz caught a touchdown too, and they overturned it. Fitz, yeah, it was. It, it, it was. It I was. thought it was too. Yeah, I was, was surprised they overturned that. So like Fitz could have like really dunked on Ward here, and you would have felt like an idiot, Davis, with your three targets or whatever Ward got. I well, actually so, would not. I I wouldn't have felt like an idiot. I would have felt. I would have felt fine because I I enjoy feel that my, twelve and a half target share. Twelve. And I would have. I I. Here's the thing. My feelings are not subject to change. I know how my lineup is good or bad before the start of the game, dude. It's 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 TTP. It's process over results. My feelings are not subject. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so here's what I did. I played Freeman, Lewis, and DeAndre Washington like Nate, and then I played Julio Thomas and Greg Ward like David. Um, so I just took like the the sharpest things that both you guys did and just put them into one lineup. And then you but just you just said, dude, I might, I might I might I might I might I might I might play a tight end who's gonna get six targets, one catch, eight yards, and a fumble, and I'm just gonna do that. Versus a so, guy who could legit put a thirty burger on my face. So the things that you guys have to understand is that is that it's more of an art. It's more of an art. I mean, Mike Gisicki. Third in air yards over the last month. Gisicky. 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 Sorry, I, I, in my job, I work with a doctor named, whose name is spelled like this, and it's Gisicky, and I used to call him Gisecki, and he like got real mad at me and corrected me, and so now I pronounce it Gisicky. Sammy plays tight ends that he can't pronounce their names. It, it, uh, irrelevant. Irrelevant. I, I, you know, the guy just smashed. He was just a great play. I like air yards. Nate, you don't like air yards? You don't, you don't want them in your lineup? It's Sammy. Austin Hooper was the the like he was one of the clears value. You like, almost you crazy. almost ate you almost ate a tight end being over fifty percent owned in cash. You got the hundred yard bonus two weeks in a row. Was it just something where it was like last week you didn't 
feel enough after getting smashed by a 30 burger from like a 60% owned tight end that you're like, dude, it's that, it's that, try that again. he's, Sammy's <laughs> mentally strong and he understands he can lose at one position if he wins at the others. That's and right. it's just that CTP, Nate. It's, <laughs> Nate, dude, it's just the tight end. Yeah. <laughs> Just, actually, the point, end, the points, the points matter less at tight end, actually, I think is the they thesis of the play. Is 0.75, right? <laughs> it's, that's the thesis of the play. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's the opposite of tight end premium? Tight end. Tight end. I don't, it's, tight tight end. end the, the opposite of tight end premium is whatever your strategy the last two weeks has been. <laughs> you know what, dude? I just, I, I, I'm going to do this till the day I die. I am ready to forego a, a mid-level tight end to make the whole rest of my lineup work because the reality is that tight ends will always have less upside than receivers and running backs. They will always have lower. Medium that is, it's not, that is, that is incorrect. That is that, incorrect. That is correct. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. That's, do you want that, me to read out? Do you want me to, do you want me to read out to you every Austin Hooper stat line from this season? Yeah. Great. Great. And at the end, you can tell me how many fewer points he scored than Gisaki, which was like 11. <sighs> This is so tilting. <laughs> it's 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 so tilting that it worked out for you because you should have gotten punished. Yeah, here's here's the thing though. Even if Gasecki only gets one point, I'm still like putting up a hundred. Yeah, you, you still you Gusecki. still won. Yeah, like I, I you know I I knew that Hooper was one of the best plays in the slate. The I, the I'm sacrifice that like you should have made if you had if you really if you really wanted to go the dude it's just it, it doesn't matter you would have played the Browns defense instead of the Cowboys defense and literally just eaten like negative three or whatever. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> That's <laughs> that actually. It. That act like I so I, the lineup I saw I think that was doing that was I don't have the salaries up so now it's gonna be weird. I think it was Matt Ryan at quarterback, Devonta Freeman. F, uh, I don't remember. I'm okay. I don't. Yeah, keep going going going. to the end of the podcast once we're gone. I just was trying. I was just trying to remember because there was a Matt Ryan team that I saw that I, now that I'm thinking about it, probably must have just absolutely smashed because Matt Ryan actually had a decent game. Uh, so that's. I mean, that's all I got. We all play different defenses. That was. I mean, yeah, he had 300. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, Nate, that was actually. Defense. Nate, that was actually. So I started out the day having your lineup, and then what I realized I was like. Paying up thirty five hundred dollars for a defense is literally stupid. Like it is so dumb because I like I looked correct. at our I looked at our projections on like some it's just helpful to like look at the actual projections and I was Nate, like Nate paid thirty five hundred for a defense and didn't pay up to go from from Keenan Allen to Julio Jones. Because there was nothing I could have done. Like you could have you could have played you could have played the Browns. The Browns Browns Julio that, fit. Nate. I don't think Browns Julio fits. It was a it was a twenty wasn't it like a two thousand dollars? So, so the Broncos, the Broncos were thirty five hundred, and yeah. key, here I will, I'll add it up right now. Broncos were thirty five hundred. No, no, no. Here I got this, dude. Uh, Keenan was sixty three, so it was yeah 700. nine thousand nine thousand eight hundred. Actually, no, I'm wrong. No, yeah, I'm right. it, 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 it doesn't there fit. There was there was fit. no without me moving off Devonta or or Lamar or like him. There was no way I could have done it. It, there actually was. You could have played my lineup, which is exactly what I did. Okay, like I said, there was no rational way I'm going to put out a lineup that, like, Sammy, I, you got lucky. I think that was bad construction. <laughs> I'm not going to swear on the podcast, but. <laughs> I'm happy for you. You can, you can eat my bunghole, bro. Mike Kaseki is a dog, and he smashed, and it was awesome, and I'm rich. <laughs> Mike Kosicki is one of the biggest human beings I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he's a giant. He's all giant. of his family, all of his family is huge too. Which yeah, was... have you not seen the family, Nate? I didn't. And, and it's didn't it's more that. of an art. You got to look into these things. You can't just. It's really, it's really, yeah. It is. It's more of an art. It's more of an art, and it's just sad that you don't know it at this point. That it's more yeah, of an art. I'm actually, team. I'm the actually, I'm board. actually Team Sammy here, dude. He just wakes up, checks our group chat, and it's just like, whatever, dude. Play the play the best plays, PTB. You know, like all season, I've been smashing tight ends. Like I know the the Thomas versus Higby thing didn't la- work last week. <laughs> no, yeah, just this one did this time when it, hey, I faded a thirty nine hundred dollar tight end who got the bonus. You you got you all remember the Johnu Smith week. You know, you guys you guys remember. You know, the you, know you know what you actually should have done. 
you know what you what? actually should have done? Our Just our like Lord Kaden. and Savior, Caden, dude. Caden Caden Smith. It was kind of mentally weak of me not to do that, I'll be honest. Dude, literally, he double dongs, dude. Like, imagine <laughs> coming on this podcast and being like, bro, I played Caden Smith, I PTB'd, like, I got all the best plays in, and I played Caden Smith. He would have been .01% on in cash. Yeah. You'd have been the would have only been one with him. Gusecki was only 5%. That would have been way more galaxy. What Bad for the brand. Mentally weak. I'm sorry about this. All right, so we should we should talk a little bit about week 17. First thing is just go all in. Whatever you have left on your DK account end of the year, just you got you just jam it in. Do not do this, everybody. <laughs> dude, I love. I, no, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's it's for the year end taxes. Yeah, dude. It's for the year end taxes. Yeah, it's like it's like if you lose, it's actually really you win because you just don't have to give that money to the government. Yeah. yeah. That's so that's take. that's obvious. Um, but also DraftKings. Did not adjust very many of the prices based on guys not playing. So the the teams that I was kind of talking about this with Nate while we were waiting for Sammy to figure out how a computer works because he's 9,700 years old. Uh, so the Los Angeles Rams, they got nothing to play for, right? Like they're, they're completely eliminated, as are the Arizona Cardinals. Why would they not start Bortles? Ooh. Uh, oh, is this finally going to be Malcolm Brown week? I think oh, it would be Daryl. Think it would. Oh no, they put him on the IR. Henderson's dust, bro. Oh, so it, yes. act, it would actually probably be John Kelly. I oh, mean, maybe, maybe it would like be Malcolm. Kelly. Maybe it would be Malcolm Brown. I don't know. But yeah, but I would be more. Kelly. I would. Kelly's good. I, I tell you this. I don't know if I would ever run harder to press a lock button than Blake Bortles at home against the Arizona Cardinals defense in Week 17 for him playing for another year of contract extension. Yeah, that's a that's a portal smash waiting. That's got happen. that's got big Matt Flynn game energy written all over it. <laughs> big lead. Who's gonna start for uh the Seahawks? I know. Oh, they're gonna be off the main slate. They got flat. Yeah, they're so they're the they're the, the the Travis Homer game. It's literally the only one not on the main slate. That's, that's horrible. A damn shame. Damn yeah. shame. Uh, so Oakland and Denver. Oakland will play all their starters. Denver is going to play all their dudes, obviously. Uh, oh, you guys, is it going to be an RG3 day? Yeah. But, oh, but, yeah. dude, it's but, like literally the worst matchup he could have against the, the Ravens don't need to do anything, and it's against the Steelers who have to try. Yeah. Yeah, like, do you really think they're even going to run? I don't know what they're going to do with RG3. No, they're going to run. They're for sure. There, do you think you think they're gonna stop? It's, you think they're gonna turn into like like twenty five carry game? Justice Hill. Look, if it's not yeah. if it's not finally Justice Hill week in week seventeen, I I might retire. Like this might that might be my last podcast ever. Is if I have to come on this podcast and be like, I played Justice Hill in cash. He got four carries and two targets. It was the worst day of my life. Yeah, I'm excited for all the uh, zero RB teams that, that drafted Justice Hill and Darwin Thompson and you know all those guys. Uh, Do you know how much of a you know how much of a you sick boomer, boomer you are? Sammy. You're literally such a boomer, such a dude. Boomer. Like, yeah how did how did all the how did all the teams that drafted Derrick Henry and Dalvin Cook do today? Did they smash? <laughs> 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 yeah, but at least they were still playing, bro. At least how, they were still how, how was playing. riding Saquon through the uh through the fantasy championships. The Alvin Kamara teams were good too. James Conner teams smashing. Yeah, I'm, I'm see, sure those early the, the, back. Sammy, the thesis behind the play was actually just to get Joe Mixon and just ride him getting thirty carries a week from week nine to week fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay. Indianapolis and Jacksonville, neither of these teams are playing for anything, right? Or can Indy still get in? Uh, no, Indy's dust. Indy's got not that. I mean, they might. Yeah, they're they're uh, Tennessee, Houston. They'll play everyone. Washington, and Dallas will play everyone. Uh, the, here, Nate, this is this is for you. Atlanta, Tampa Bay. I mean, just let is, your. This is not Jameis's. Yeah. Long song. No, I, you can't. I mean, with with no Godwin and no Evans, I don't think Jameis is in play. Like. He's now priced way up, and everybody's on him. Have you, have yeah, you but not, he threw, have you not seen the, the have, you not seen, is, have you not seen have you not seen the terrible. have you not seen the Whopper, bro? Eighteen forty eight passing attempts last week. I don't use attempts since I since you guys. I don't that, I don't use attempts. I just mentioned how many passing attempts he has every time you guys criticize me. No, because I start with passing attempts to then talk about area, to then talk about average depth of target, then talk about. I, 
I bet, I bet right now, if you go look at his air yards from this Houston game, I bet he had crazy air yards. I didn't even watch the game, and I bet he had crazy air yard numbers in that game. Well, when the receivers are dust, I'm really not. Will Will Greer is still only (laughs) (laughs) 4,600. The thesis behind the play, dude, you didn't understand the thesis. They uh they did not move Alvin Kamara up very much in salary at all. He a guy finally has a good game and he moves up three hundred dollars in salary in a must win game where they're playing for the bye at Carolina. Well, no, if the if the Packers lose tomorrow, then it doesn't matter. Right. So we're oh okay. So if the Packers are so are we rooting for the Packers to Wait. lose so that no so would we prefer Alvin Kamara or would we prefer Latavius? No, they'd sit him too. They would play Dwayne Washington like week 17 last year. Oh yeah. I would prefer that Aaron Rodgers loses regardless of what it means fantasy wise. You know what? You make it, you make a good point. Cause that Dang guy's you. literally, that guy's literally the worst. the worst. I used to be such a big fan, but he's kind of a, he's kind of a grumpy old boomer now. When did you, oh, so you actually like him cause he's the same person as you? No, no, boomers don't like other boomers. Oh, okay. So we is don't that, like yeah, I get it. either. Like we just don't like anybody. Just grumpy all the time you just like to play like fantasy baseball that's right seasonal fantasy baseball is hot and then so, play Mike Gusecki in, in DFS and so last year week 17 same scenario dude you get this is so sick do you guys remember that Washington actually split carries but he still got the 100 yard that? bonus and that yeah. he he split carries with um did he get like eight carries 11 yeah yeah. Zero target, zero targets. Market. They they said they were like, so Teddy's starting, but Ingram's gonna play a little bit. And Ingram got five carries. Zach Line got three. Taysom Hill got three. Tommy Lee Lewis got one. Dwayne Washington got eleven carries for a hundred and eight yards. Was this not a Tim Hightower game? <laughs> it's going back a little I far. Think, I think that was I think that was a few years ago. Well, yeah, I I remember those days fondly. Yeah. So, I mean, I they don't you know. Mark Ingram, not on the team. I just want to go back to 2014 with Niles Davis week. Niles Davis, like, 17. That was Nile, like li- Nile Davis. Nile Davis. Well, I mean, what yeah, did he just, have? Just one Nile. Two, 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 I, two. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look it up right now. Because yeah, it was that was that was like when that was when that was the uh, last DFS. year where there was a huge edge. Now it's like I go into week 17 going, oh man, all these idiots are gonna, and then I'm like, oh wait, no, I'm gonna lose money this week. Dude, Nile Davis, what a legend he was. Uh, okay, dude, it's gotta be here. Okay, week 17, week 17 of 2013. Dude, we are old, man. No, it was 2014, I think, was it? It was, it wasn't. It really wasn't. It really, it was not. He had week 16, or week 17, game 16, 27 carries, 81 yards, two touchdowns, four targets, two receptions. Uh, that was in 2013, and then maybe he had one in 2016. No, yeah, Nate, that's literally how old we are, dude. 2013. 2013. Nice. That's hey, how long yo. we've been doing this. Yo, what are we gonna do about AJ Brown? I mean, I know he's not like a must play. He had two targets, but he had, again, like two 30 plus yard plays, and he looks like Daryl Boston with speed. That's uh that's an okay boomer play. I, I mean, dude, the guy's just a beast. How did I not like? How are people not on this guy? I'm not like a draft net or anything, but that guy looks like just an absolute truck. I mean, he was pretty highly drafted. He was drafted, I think, at the 45th overall pick. That's very high for a wide receiver. That guy's that guy's just a dog. But He's also the reason the, the, screen, right? the reason why people were kind of split or like didn't know what to do with him is that he played with DK Metcalf, who is obviously a good NFL player. You know, other than the fact that he had recorded zero receptions in this game <laughs> against the Arizona Cardinals. Against Arizona, yeah, real good. <laughs> and and also Demarcus Lodge, who is on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers practice squad. Hey, like, hey Nate, and hey, and Nate. and Dawson Knox, the Buffalo Bills tight end. Hey Nate, next week uh, Greg Ward and Christian Kirk are the same price. <laughs> <laughs> What's the life Fitzgerald? I'm just well, no, because Mar- Murray might not play. Because it might be we. Yeah, he got a he got a hamstring thing. And that was the other thing that was tilting because they finished the game with uh, Brett, Brett Hundley. Brett, you know, oh, Hundley, yeah, Hundley running. Jeez. Brett, that dude, was, he he tilting. ran in that like a quarter and a half. He played. He ran six yards. times. 
But Kenyon Drake still had like 200 yards rushing and four touchdowns. Kenyon, Kenyon Drake is, uh, I mean, yeah, dude, just zero RB. You just had to, you, like the thesis behind zero RB was that you had to draft Kenyon Drake and Miles Sanders. <laughs> Miles Sanders went in like the sixth round, bro. He was not like that. He was on, he was on Sean Siegel's zero RB list. Yeah. list. And so is Austin Eckler. It's awesome. So all you had to do is draft the right zero RB guys. Yeah. yeah all you had to do is follow draft the right Sean plays. Siegel. <laughs> All you, all all you gotta do, right. all you gotta do, like, it's actually very simple. You just gotta play the best plays. Right. Yeah. Um, and do we want to, we want to tout Brett Hundley to the people? Uh, if he's gonna run. I mean, if he's gonna be like fancy Kyler Murray, great. He's gonna be, he's more gonna be like fancy Oakland Raiders Terrell Pryor. <laughs> you know, I'm into it. <laughs> I, I like that. Say, you're getting me excited. <laughs> I, here's the thing. We've, we've He's actually way seen. Than Redskins trail yeah. prior. Or Browns trail prior. Jeez. He was on the Redskins. Let's, uh, let's just, let's take a trip down Brett Hundley career he was, lane. He, he was, uh, Aaron Rodgers. So player. these are, these are his rushing attempts in his starts for Green Bay. 7-7, seven, seven, 5 for 48, uh, 4 for 22 in a touchdown, 3 for 44 in a touchdown. Three for nineteen you can, in you a. Can just, you can just stop right there. I'm sold. I'm playing Brett Hundley in cash yeah. this week. You got me excited at the trail prior, but now I've already locked it in DK. Dude, he actually like low key was kind of good for fantasy in these games. <laughs> Dude, this is this is hot. I'm playing him in cash. He's uh he's one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever watched though. Like you guys need you guys need to know that this was like a guy who struggled uh at UCLA. Like eight yards per attempt in the Pac-12 is uh is decidedly not it, Chief. Dude, he ran a four six forty. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, he's a he's a good he's he's a good player. Uh, I mean, he he ran a lot in college too. They price Gasecki up next week against New England. I'm out. Oh, dude, not Gasecki will price up at like six K, right? I mean, that's what he was worth this week. You know, I gotta I gotta. What a twenty four hundred dollar discount, dude! Nice. They're joshing our boy Caden Smith to the people thirty seven hundred. Three point seven. We might have to go with it. Remember when 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 everyone played Rhett Ellison when it should have just been Caden season? Yeah, they they amended that pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Everyone, thank you very much for listening to the Gilcast on the Sports Grid Fantasy Football Podcast, simulcast on the Rotor Grinders Podcast Network. We will uh, see you back next week for the last Gilcast of the year. Don't miss this huge deal at Old Navy. Today only get $15 Pixie Pants for women. That's right, the super flattering Pixie Pants you love are on sale one day only today for just 15 bucks at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Valid 1227, select styles only. Don't miss this huge deal at Old Navy. Today only get $15 Pixie Pants for women. That's right, the super flattering Pixie Pants you love are on sale one day only today for just 15 bucks at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Valid 1227, select styles only.